Ladies and gentlemen, welcome into my official college football week number 11. Picks and predictions here as we get into November. Beginning on a Thursday night, we've got a ranked team playing on a Thursday night. This is the real Thursday night football here. It is Louisville and Virginia. Virginia, you know, they've won a few fluky games, but they're sitting 19 and a half point underdogs. I think we're all kind of waiting for Louisville to slip up and lose to someone. Maybe they just win out until the ACC championship and then possibly lose that. But right now they do have one loss. I do think they win this game fairly easily. Will they cover the 19 and a half? I'm staying away from it personally, but I've got this at a 36 to 17 score. Louisville, they've got a very underrated stadium. It's pretty big. We'll see if they'll be able to sell it out. That'd be good for college football on a Thursday night if they sold that out. Although facing Virginia, they're not the biggest draw. Let's be real. Moving on to the Saturday slate, and here it is right off the bat. It is Michigan and Penn State, very likely... <clears throat> going to be a top 10 matchup. You do have Michigan sitting minus five and a half. The analytics have Penn State as a very slight favorite. So this game, there's a lot of angles you have to consider. Number one, is Jim Harbaugh coaching this game? There's been rumors about a two-game suspension. I'm going to make this prediction with the idea that Harbaugh is coaching. Now, if he gets suspended, I do think that will cost Michigan one to two points, meaning they'll go from minus five and a half to about minus four. This line opened minus six and a half, and I got bet down. It doesn't surprise me. The analytics love Penn State value plus the six and a half. That's why it's already down to five and a half. Penn State is at home. They did get screwed with this start time being at noon. The, you know, the big noon charade, it is what it is, but guys, I do think you're pretty safe to take a Penn State to cover the five and a half, but I like Michigan to win this game. There's just no way I can trust Penn State with the lack of receiving weapons they have right now. Also, they've had a very average run game. Like, I know they've got the two running backs, but both of them, when you look at their yards per carry, have not been good. We understand Michigan has a fundamentally sound defense. Whether or not you want to take into account, oh, maybe we should move them down a little bit because of the sign stealing, it is very hard to predict Michigan. I do like Penn State plus, you know, the five and a half, but Michigan just has way more talent. Uh, well, I don't know if they have way, yeah, I wouldn't say they have way more talent. They've got veteran talent. They've got a more experienced quarterback. They've got better receivers, skill position players. Blake Corum and Donovan Edwards have kind of struggled this year. Michigan's almost more of a passing team at this point, but I do like them in a noon game, 24 to 21. Give me Penn State plus the five and a half there. Another noon game, it is Alabama. Everyone is starting to love Bama. They're sitting minus 11 going on the road at a little feisty Kentucky team. Is a weird spot. Normally, Alabama never plays at noon. I do like them to win this game. And I think the story of this game, leading up to this game, it's going to be Jalen Milrow, Jalen Milrow, Jalen Milrow. But going out of this game, I think Alabama's defense shines against Kentucky on the road. They get five or six sacks. They get one interception maybe one forced fumble, and they win this game relatively easily. I like the under in this one. I do think Bama covers minus 11. Don't have a ton of faith in it, but they've been playing really well recently, and I think their defense wins them this game on the road there. Another noon game, it is Kansas. This is 11 a.m. Central taking on Texas Tech, and this just feels like a shootout. You have Kansas possibly going to be entering the top 20. We'll see with the college football playoff rankings. They're, you know, they've won a few games. It's been impressive. Texas Tech has a very high upside. Remember, this is a Texas Tech team. They barely lost to Oregon in week two. They've had some close games. They're better than their record, and I do think this is going to be a shootout. I do like Tech to cover the four. Kansas wins this game by one. We get an easy over. The analytics love the over in that one. I will take Kansas, though, winning outright. They've got the quarterback situation. You know, is Jason Bean going to be starting? We will see. Either way, that should be a higher scoring game. Next, it's another noon game. It's Tulsa traveling to Tulane, and I've been nailing the Tulane prediction. So that's three straight weeks 
I bet against Tulane, and that's three straight weeks they haven't covered the spread. I've been against Tulane, but now, because I know the law of averages, I can understand this, I'm back in on Tulane to cover the 22.5 point spread against the terrible Tulsa team. They're, they still do have a chance to make a New Year's Six Bowl, but I'm guessing Tulane is pretty much disqualified from a New Year's Six because they made it last year, and we would really rather see a different you know, group of five team make a New Year's Six Bowl. They had their chance last year. Let's let's give it to somebody else. But either way, I do like Tulane to win this game by 30 points and easily cover the 22 and a half. Moving on to the three o'clock games. There's a few three o'clock games, I think, and then there's a bunch of 3.30. It is Kansas State sitting minus 20 and a half against Baylor. So Baylor has fallen off. You can see Kansas State 95% chance to win. Basically an auto lock. The analytics love Kansas Kansas State, they played well, they fought back against Texas, they almost beat them, I understand Texas, they were starting a backup quarterback, but still, this is a very good Kansas State team, and I just really like them, they're going to be at home, you're talking about 35, 40 degree weather, this is a warm weather Baylor team, they're going to freeze out there, it's not going to be close in Manhattan, Kansas. We will take them 38 to 7. They're going to cover the 20 and a half. Next, we've got an interesting ACC matchup. It is FSU at home taking on Miami. And guys, I've talked to several FSU fans, and they're already admitting they're afraid of Tyler Van Dyke. They're afraid of Mario Cristobal. This is a scary matchup for FSU. They're a team that kind of struggled against Pittsburgh. They got the win. They had a good defensive performance. They're sitting minus 15. This game is going to be a shootout. I know Miami lost last week. It was a terrible performance against NC State, but this is what Miami football does. They play horrible one week, good the next week. This is going to be a close game. Both of these teams from Florida, little rivalry there. We will take Florida State to win it 35-32, to and they will remain undefeated closer than expected. Miami is better than people think they are. Let's not overreact to one loss. We like them to cover the 15 there. Another 330 game. It is Washington at home taking on Utah, only sitting minus nine and a half. So Washington, people are down on them. Their defense, not nearly as good as we thought they were. The analytics hate Washington. Utah coming off a crazy blowout 50 burger that no one saw coming over Arizona State. But guys, let's understand something. You're talking about a complete offensive mismatch in terms of explosiveness when you're talking about Washington and Utah add in home field advantage and I think this is like a 32 to 8 type game I can respect Utah's defense you know I, I'm, we're not going to have Washington dropping a 50 burger or anything like that but I do like Washington to cover the nine and a half just because the offensive advantage is so great they will remain undefeated Utah will lose again here on the road although I will say I have disrespected Utah this year I need to apologize to them. It's It's been hard betting on Utah, but either way, guys, we'll take Washington minus the 9.5. This is a big-time 3.30 game in the SEC. It is Tennessee traveling to Missouri. Tennessee right now sitting minus 1 on the road. Virtual pick -em game, 61% chance. A lot of people really high on Tennessee. They've been playing well the last few weeks. Missouri coming off that unfortunate loss at Georgia. They only lost by nine points. It wasn't terrible or anything like that. And we will take Missouri at home. I like their offensive upside a little bit more than Tennessee. They're a better passing team and they're the home team. And think about the raucous environment. When is the last time Missouri's had a huge home SEC game this late into the season? It is going to be crazy. 3.30, so it's going to be, the sun is going to be setting. You got to love those immaculate vibes. And we do like Missouri. Tennessee nothing against them. They're a very sound team. I just don't think they have the passing ability to beat a Missouri team. Well, I mean, l listen, Tennessee could certainly win this game. I'm not going to say like, oh, Tennessee has no chance. I have them losing by three, so they could certainly win this. But just in terms of if I had to pick one, Missouri to me has more offensive passing explosiveness, which gives them a little bit of an edge. Also add to the fact that they're at home. I will take them there. Next, we've got Oklahoma State at UCF. And this one really pains me. I'm, I'm not going to lie, it really does, because I love this Oklahoma State team, but you got to know when to get off the bandwagon. I had them winning outright last week as a six-point underdog, but guys, I'm off of the bandwagon. I'll take UCF at home. We've seen this UCF team now 
play a little bit better recently. They do have offensive upside. They're at home. Oklahoma State only minus two and a half. The analytics do give UCF a 52% chance to win. I will take UCF 27 to 24. It's sad. Ollie Gordon, it would be amazing if he won the Heisman. Why not just give him the Heisman? I mean, who else is going to win it? You know, it's just kind of a weird year for the for the award, but I will take UCF there in a little bit of an upset, although not really. It is basically a pick 'em. Moving on to a random 5:30 game. It is Oregon State sitting right now past inside the top 16 taking on Stanford. Oregon State minus 21 coming off that road win against Colorado and we love Oregon State and DJ Uwe Lengile this year they've been so impressive 94% chance to win what an amazing final season for that program to get the transfer QB from Clemson and to play this well they're not going to screw their own season by losing a disaster game against a bad Stanford team they will stabilize themselves they will win easily will they cover the 21 and a half probably honestly I've got them 38 to 14 in a sound victory there. Moving on to the night window, there's a seven o'clock game. It is Ole Miss traveling to Georgia. And man, I, I feel like college football needs Ole Miss to win this game. We really need a shakeup. We need a Georgia to lose. We need an Ohio State or a Michigan to lose. Like college football needs this. Georgia is at home. They're minus 11 and a half. The FPI, man, only a 69% chance to win. Normally with Georgia, it's always over like 80, especially when they're at home. And Ole Miss, they do have offensive upside, especially Georgia without Brock Bowers. But guys, I just cannot do it. I have Georgia winning this game 24-21. to Maybe a walk-off late field goal. Georgia has too much talent on offense, on defense. Even without Bowers, they will or they should win this game. But it would be very interesting if Ole Miss somehow wins this game considering their situation. They're not going to the SEC championship unless Alabama loses two games. But this win, this could put them in a spot where they could still make the playoff while not making the SEC championship if they somehow won this game. It'll be interesting to watch there. There's another 7 o'clock game. West Virginia coming off like a 30 seven to nothing win on the road at Oklahoma. Oklahoma obviously going to be ranked lower than number nine. We're just waiting for, you know, what they're actually going to be ranked when the college football playoff poll comes out on Tuesday night, probably like 16 or 17. Oklahoma is minus 12 and a half. And I do think Oklahoma stabilizes themselves. I like a higher scoring game here. Oklahoma covering the 12 and a half. They still are very solid analytically and they should win this game easily. And they still do have an outside chance to potentially make a New Year's Six Bowl if Texas can make the playoff. Moving on to the primetime game of the night, it is Ohio State taking on Michigan State in a heavyweight battle. Ohio State sitting minus 30 and a half with a 98% chance to win. Michigan State, it's been a tough year. They got a big win last week against Nebraska. The Buckeyes using a different formula this year. The concerns for Kyle McCord, they're real, they're legitimate. He's not in proving at all, but Trevion Henderson and that offensive line are getting better. You also do have Marvin Harrison. You've got a very solid defense. I think Ohio State wins this game. It's hard for me to say they'll cover a 30 and a half point spread just based on how they've been playing. That's a lot to ask, especially against a Michigan State team. They're going to fight. They're going to try. I do like the Buckeyes. I like the over in this game, 43 and a half. The analytics love the over, the value on it. We will take Ohio State pretty big here, 37 to 10. That game's on NBC. Another primetime game. It is Texas traveling to TCU. And you think, what does TCU have a losing record? Ho hum. No big deal. Texas is going to win this game. Guys, I have an absolute shocker upset. TCU brings some of the magic in from last year and wins this game and eliminates the Big 12 from the playoff. TCU football is no joke. They've gotten very unlucky this year. The analytics love them. Texas will not only not cover the 10, but they will lose this game outright. And listen, I would love to see Texas make the playoff because I want to see Texas versus Ohio State. But either way, guys, I think they lose to TCU. They almost lost last week to Kansas State. We will see 
It's another 7.30 game. It's LSU at home against Florida. We will see LSU dealing with the QB injury to Daniels. Will he play? I'm guessing he will, considering even with the three losses, he still has a chance at the Heisman. Florida, they've been demoralized. They've lost back-to-back -back games, including against a bad Arkansas team. They're 15.5-point underdogs. We'll take a higher-scoring game with LSU covering as long as there's no QB injuries going into it, 41 to 24 there. Nine o'clock game, it is Arizona State. Man, have they been bad. I got a nice little black background for them. I don't know, that looks pretty good there with the, you know, fork taking on UCLA coming in. UCLA disappointing loss against Arizona. Maybe Arizona will get ranked by the poll. We will see UCLA sitting minus 17. And yeah, Arizona State is just horrific. They have no offense. I'll take UCLA to cover 37 to 14 in that one. And then a really late game. I don't know why they would do this. Why is this game on at 1030? Put this on at 7.30 or something, man, or 3.30. It is Oregon minus 14 and a half taken on USC. So Oregon, they look really good right now. Everyone loves them. Their resume isn't the strongest, but the eye test, they certainly passed that. Bo Nix, you can actually start considering him as a potential Heisman contender, although I would guess you would pick Penix Jr. over him considering Penix Jr. beat you know, him head-to-head, -head. but either way, we know USC. They just fired Alex Grinch two years too late. It's going to be a really high-scoring game. Oregon's going to win. We already know the script to this, 52-34, to 34. but either way, guys, that is going to do it for my official college football week number 11 picks and predictions. Make sure you're following me on X. Link to that's always in the description.